Hello everyone and welcome to this, our first episode of Standard Intelligence Versus. Myself and John are going to be taking some of the decks that we've spoken about this week on the podcast. Obviously it hasn't come out yet, but it will once the YouTube of this comes out. So, forward planning. Um, and we're going to be playing some of those decks that we spoke a little bit about, as well as playing some of the more interesting, slightly off-the-wall stuff that we think is... Uh, at least worth looking at at the moment, given given the way standard is. Uh, you know, standard Definitely. standard actually feels really open at the moment. Um, obviously, Bantscape Shift is a very important deck in the in the format, but it does feel like you should just be playing the deck that you enjoy the most, like the style of deck you enjoy the most. So, uh, I think what we're going to be trying to do is see if that's actually sensible just play a decent deck and and play it well is is that really good enough to to do well in standard um we are going into this and both myself and john have not told each other what we're playing so no. you guys will obviously be able to see because uh if you use the exclamation mark decks in the chat you'll be able to pull up and you'll be able to see nightbox got both of our deck lists that we're using for this one and i will change those around for the next match and and the last one and you'll be able to see what we're doing, but we won't know going into it. So it'll be much more like tournament magic where you don't know what's happening, you know, until the very end of it. Yeah, and I'm not looking at anything of Jack's Twitch. I am completely going completely blind. I'm not going to try and, and to do over him in that way. But uh, <laughs> obviously one of the one of the big things is it's kind of just going to be fun. Like we're not taking this too seriously. No. So I think... One of the things is maybe obviously I was going to ask because what thing we haven't mentioned is how many versions we're going to do of each deck. So what I was thinking is maybe if we did best of one of each, so our first deck versus our first deck, our second deck versus our second deck, our third deck versus our third deck, yeah. and then maybe look at the time. If we've got more time, we can just randomly roll what deck we're going to play yep. for the next one, and then obviously they play face off against each other in another game. Yep. Would you be interested in that? I, I, If we've got time, I would be very much up for that because I don't do nearly as much testing as I should. <laughs> yes, and we are going back to standard MCQs. So, yeah. I mean, obviously it won't be this is good. This format unless you're going to Birmingham, but uh, we, we do need to get some, some practice in with some of these guys. Yeah. And, and I do think a lot of the decks will transfer reasonably well. Like obviously, the Scapeshift deck won't, won't. exactly transfer. <laughs> well, it won't at as... all because Scapeshift was 19 and that's going. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> but there may be a uh, there may be some version that you can play that still makes that style of deck work, the very grindy mid-range list. So yeah, maybe one... maybe ramp with ways of finding lands, and instead of like scape shifting for this combo win, you're just grinding value with the fact that every time you play a land, you make a two-two. So... Yeah. That seems that seems strong enough as it is. So, yeah, as long as you're doing other stuff. And Bant has picked up like we had a Bant Flash list last season that looked really yes. good. So maybe you could try and interleave those two ideas of you know just some good value creatures and some some uh, some different sorts of lands, and then try and get your value that way. That would be really interesting. But yeah, obviously your scape shift combo kill is going away. It's the idea of the deck should stay. Yes, I agreed. Yeah, no, well, very true. Well. Should we get into our first one? Uh, yes. Obviously, everyone watching can see exactly what it is that I'm taking for this first matchup. I am not convinced that this is a brilliant deck in the <laughs> format, but it is really fun to play. So I'm, sure. I'm super excited to give it a go. Well, that worries me then, because I'm worried I'm now going to get killed. I'm going to get absolutely obliterated. <laughs> no, this we'll is, soon find out. This is very much not tier one, but uh, but it could be could be a laugh. Uh -huh. Huzzah! I am on the play. I actually won a dice roll. Nice. First time for everything, and that is a, a straight mulligan. Yeah, same. Oh. That is not a keepable hand. That is a keepable uh, hand. We'll keep that. This one is also a mulligan. This one is definitely keepable. I think we'll have to go. I think we have to keep this one. Going to five is a little bit unfortunate, but you mulligan to six. It's not the end of the world. I've got a pretty decent amount of things that I can do. Yeah. Got a few good lines. Uh, I will keep five and I will ditch this and this. Okay, so start on a mulligan to five. It's an excellent start for our game of magic. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, kind of wish I'd put a land back now as he draws yet another one, but whatever. 
This is going to be very interesting, actually, as to what you kept in your as your deck. Ah, uh, okay. I understand what we're playing against now. Yep. Well, let's be honest. It's probably the deck that I'm most familiar with, and I want to leave the funny meme decks for after this. Uh, and I would rather just get myself into the game playing a deck that I am reasonably familiar with now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um... So I'm I'm wondering, are you playing the deck that we did speak about in the podcast? No, you're not. Ah, oh, you're playing the Flash deck. <laughs> Hello, friend. Uh, so I think because you're playing Flash, I'm just going to try and race you with two twos. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a really good plan against me. Yeah. I'm stuck on two lands. I could do with a third land. But uh, let's see what we can get. Well, that's unfortunately not a land, but it's a fairly decent attack. All right, let's see if we can get you. I don't think we're going to, but let's see if we can um, get you. That can resolve. Let's try and get something going. Okay, that's that can stay on top. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a land by any chance? It, it may well be, yes. <laughs> that may well be a land, yes. Okay, we... We are dying very quickly to this. Yeah. I mean, this is that, that incredibly doesn't help. aggressive start. Yeah, no, we are super dead here. Our hand looks really good against a mid-range deck and fracking ah. awful against anything that turned creatures sideways on turn three. Uh, I'll, I'll, I will just show you I have a very large man. Uh, I mean, I can get out of this but it's not gonna Ooh. save me spicy uh that will resolve the thing is you're still taking six damage now yeah that, like i say that's quite scary i think i have to keep that on top as stupid as that seems uh I'm gonna given that, that i know that there's two spells in your hand yeah Oh no, I can't. I can't live next turn. Yeah, we are just. I back. have. I, I will say I have the gods willing in hand. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I was. I was very, very dead there. Uh, all right then. Let's and throw I, away this. Uh, and in some ways, I think that does show up why there is a small issue with that. With with that with the flash deck is if it does fall behind, it's quite hard oh, to come it, back from. It has no catch up mechanics. Yeah, it's why it's yeah. it's fun when it works, but. It so frequently just doesn't work that there's not really much to it past that. Yeah, exactly. Right, what do we want to do in the sideboard then? Oh, this is tough. The flash deck's really challenging to deal with, which is in which is one of the weirder parts of the deck because it doesn't play a normal game plan. No, no, absolutely uh, not. I don't think that's actually that good. Maybe that better? There are so many bad cards in my deck, though. I think I'm going to take a couple of those out and put a couple of those in. They're not great, but they're better than... That might actually be a good idea to do. So, let's so, the... many, so many cheap Sinkipate. spells on John's side that Syncopate looks fucking awful past turn two. Yeah. it's Syncopate's a way... Like, in that game, Syncopate would have been great. Yeah. You're on the fact that I'm struggling to get find lands for it. Yeah, but again, it's kind of like if like on the play, it's, I, I would actually say Syncopate is actually probably quite good on the play because, because you have I the ability to stay mana. up in mana. Yeah, but it's hard because if you ever get to a point where you're trying to do multiple things in a step, what you can find yourself is I get something into play and then you're constantly trying to Syncopate the thing that's in something that's in play. And you never get your game plan ahead while you're low on mana. So I, th I think it might be fine on the play. It's definitely worse on the draw because obviously you can't syncopate my two drop. Mm. And you do normally find it quite hard to interact with my two drops. Generally speaking. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and I mean I'm mulligan to five and yeah, I played a did. two drop and, and your syncopates you, you really had a bad. two drop and, and then I died to it. So that's, that was kind of exactly what that game was. Yeah. Does my opponent want to take the play? No, I think I might somehow. Mm. Uh, that's... I think that's a keep. Even if it's Mine's. a bit iffy. 
So so far, game one, we kept we uh, game one. The opening seven had five lands in it. The six had five lands in it. Mm -hmm. This one has one. So I'm in a mulligan this hand. Yeah. This one is not great, but we're going to keep it, and we're going to put this. Um, actually, it might be that that has to go back. Okay. This hand isn't great, but we'll see. Might just uh, depends on what you sideboarded. Like I have it like. Actually, probably keepable. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's not terrible. And that's... so this hand's a little bit, a little bit iffy, uh, but it could be fine. Uh, I'm going to play this and pass the turn. Oh, interesting. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. All right, you're gonna have something at some point. Yeah. And we have got oh Habibi has has hosted with with uh, one viewer it reckons, but I'm it's... not I'm not sure I'm not sure how accurate that one is, but yeah, well, thank thank you very much, dear. Um, well, I'm hoping that Habibi's watching. Yes, me too. Would be most disappointed if she's not. And yeah, we're going to leave it at that. Well, that just seems mean. Why couldn't you have done that pre combat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Let's see what counter spell you've got in hand. Uh, yeah, it's Essence Scatter. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Cool. Like, I have to start chewing through your spells at some point. Yeah, um, absolutely. Otherwise, yeah. And what it means is you only have a 1-1 one, one in play still. Yeah. And, yeah, the op's nice, and you get four lands and stuff, but at some point you're going to have to do something else, and it's kind of like, can I get to a point where it's relevant? Uh, oh, that's not nice. Oh. Yep, no, I'm assuming you have another one. This time it's Sinister Sabotage. Okay, that's fine. Like, I have to start going through my spell, uh, through your through your counter spells at some point? Yep, Absolutely. It's, have, not, I would, it's not like I'm clocking you or anything. <laughs> no. I would have loved to land that turn because it would have allowed me to actually play a little bit more magic, but we'll see what happens. Yep. Uh, there's a couple of a couple of cards I'd like to draw. Uh, that's fine. I guess we say go. We can't really do it. We can't really do anything at this point. Well, let's see if this can get into play and stay there. Uh, it resolves. Like Night Pack, Amb Night Pack Ambush is a really interesting card in these decks. Yeah. Um, because it can get really out of control if you're not careful. And also, it's a 4 4. So this is going to hurt. Um, I need a land off the top, and I might be able to play Magic at this point. Yep. Um, it, there's a lot of it, but some maybes as to how the next couple of turns go. Uh, that's fine. Uh, that is, if I don't have. That is the first Night Pack Ambusher trigger I've had actually go on the stack. Every time I've cast this card, it has been countered. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, interesting. Well, I'm kind of going to make you have something here. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to play an interesting game. Huh. Do you have... Now, this is the... This is the real question. If you have the second one of these, I actually want to cast this first, which seems super duper weird. Yeah, you only have I... so many ways of dealing with this Night Pack Ambusher, so I'm going to say you've got... Oh, no. You can't... You couldn't even cast it anyway. You've, you've spent mm. all of your red, so... All right. I am going to see how this next spell interacts. I am going to cast a Veil of Summer. Uh, spells you control can't be counted this turn. Well, that does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, do I want to... This can't be counted if... Spell yeah. of the, if you have spell pierce, you target 
you probably target the Vale of Summer. Yeah, yeah, because then you're not drawing a card. But I don't, yeah. and I was just like, is my unsummon going to stop this Reckless Rage? And it isn't, but I should do it now before your 10th District yep. Legionnaire gets big and attacks. So, well, we'll And obviously see, yeah. Vale of Summer will make it um, Hexproof from Black. Yep. Obviously, I will target the spell and say yes, despite the fact that we all know it's not doing anything except killing my Night Pact Ambusher. Oh, a little annoying. Yeah, I just have to find a way of not dying in the next couple of turns. Is literally the way I'm doing this. <laughs> I'll have to take the damage. Like, I'm at four, so I am really struggling right now. Yep. I hope that this resolves. Uh, yeah, that's going to resolve. All right, good sir. What have you got? Uh, crushing Canopy. Which I'm not right. convinced should be in the deck, but I know the Naya version also plays the enchantment. Uh, you have to have it in. Yeah. yeah that's I did actually have the second Reckless Rage. Yeah, but you didn't have these the the third red source up at the time. That yeah, was my sure. that was my yeah. my thing there. I was like, uh, you could have it, and then it was like, yeah, you could, but you couldn't cast it this turn. So. Okay, how do we survive the next turn? Getting lucky, apparently. Okay, well, at least we have a 10th District Legionnaire we can cast this turn. Uh, yeah, let's go with the 10th District Legionnaire. No, sir. I say no. I'm still dead because I, even the Develop Summer, you have enough power in play um, that you'll do with the one damage. So we are going to concede. No, uh, well, uh, you had. Because, you're, because I only have a 2 2. Oh, yeah, because I'm actually putting the Frilled Mystic into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you actually have three things, which yeah. makes a huge I had difference. I had forgotten that the uh, the Frilled Mystic was a creature counter spell. Yeah. Yes, it is. it does have a 3 it, 2 body it, attached to it. It does have a body attached to it, yeah. Uh... If that was, so if that was any other counter spell, I'd have just shrugged my shoulders and gone, oh, well, it's fine. I have a t uh, I can stop. I can get into play in Reckless Rage where you're 1 1 flyer. Uh, you then have to draw something to get rid of the 10th District Legionnaire. Yeah. It's kind of a stretch at that point. But it, it's one of I have to try and do something. I'm at one life. Mm. So I can't just shrug my shoulders and go, well, we're going to die otherwise, and I'm going to mulligan again. We're going to uh, keep that one. I'll keep this one. Let's put this back. First time we've drawn this card, this matchup, and. Right, cool. yeah. <laughs> so with the tap land, and yep. you can go to the bottom, good sir. I'm really, it's really strange that I'm struggling to find lands, but anyways, we'll put a 10th District Legionnaire into play and get going. I mean, that's a, that's an annoyingly good start to the day. Yeah, it worked in, it worked in game one. <laughs> yep. All right, then. Let's see what else you got. Oh, well. No lands is what you've got. Yep. I kind of want to start making use your counter spell. So I'm going to cast Season of Growth. Uh, annoyingly, I don't have a counter spell for that one. Oh, cool. Sweet. I didn't die in a garbage fire. <laughs> sure, that's fine. Yeah, no, I mean, this card's great. Yeah, right. This card's pretty cool. Yeah, no, card's great. Love it. I mean, I'm missing lands. I've, for some reason, I've mulliganed in all three games and missed all my land drops, but... The nice thing about the Feather List is you do have a lot of ways of um, drawing cards. Like, Season of Growth is just a great way of drawing extra cards. Yeah, absolutely. You start putting creatures into play and scrying, and yeah. if if you've got any spells at all, you could start drawing lands and scrying with 10th District Legionnaire, and it's all good. And if it's Defiant Strike, it's multiple cards. Yeah, yeah, right? You're like, scry, you draw, draw. Mm -hmm. That's really powerful. Uh... I mean, yep. I mean, I'd love to draw land. Yep. Agree with that one, too. Right. Let's uh, put the second one of these in. Oh, yeah. Mm, don't really want that land. I need my lands to start to come into play untapped now. Oh, that was literally the worst thing I could have drawn. Huh. Well, that was a really good draw, but I think we'll use it later. 
Okay, well, that's awkward. We're going to do a thing not at instant speed. Oh my god, really? What? What is this? Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good one, especially when I'm not drawing lands. Yeah, I was going to say, if you if you hit your land drop, we still might actually get to play Magic. If you don't, we really aren't. Uh, okay. Yeah, Enchanting Melody is a weird card. Um, I, it doesn't matter because I'm not hitting lands, so it's kind of irrelevant. But uh, yeah, it's a really weird one. Right then. Oh, well, we found a land. You did indeed, yeah. Okay. Yep. Reasonable. Reasonable. Possibly I should have waited another turn there, but... We're not dead yet. And that's the, the key thing is, I'm not dead yet. Yeah. Right. This feels really annoying. Uh... uh... I think I have to get rid of your thing that can get bigger. Goodbye, chicken legs. Mm. Yeah, all right, fine. I'm just going to beat you to death with your own creature. That's Probably. the play here. I say no! Wow. That was a good draw. Uh, I think I still... Uh, I am going to do this because I think I can do it and get away with it. I need to keep myself alive. Yep. Go on. If you've got a pump spell, this is going to be really annoying. I don't. No, I don't. But I had to get rid of the of the lethal attacker. Yeah, absolutely. Now if I can untap absolutely. and do anything. I'm still in a fine spot. I'm at one life. I keep mulliganing, which is annoying. Yep. Okay, so let's do this. I like playing Knife Adder. This is one of the worst matchups. Really? Yeah, as long as if I don't find lands. Yeah, well, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and the fact that... So, game one, you got on the board, and I couldn't do squat about it. Game no. two, you didn't hit your land drops, fell a little bit behind, and I just kept having counter spells once you did find yeah. lands. Um, yeah. The problem I've found with this flash deck is against the really aggressive decks, yeah. your counter spells don't do enough. You're too far behind yeah. for your counter spells to actually make up any ground whatsoever, so it doesn't end up mattering. So that was a, yes. yeah. So, so game three is one of those weird ones. I, if I find my third land on curve, I can make feather, and I probably pull ahead. I just never found a third land, and I think the, the bearing in mind the deck's playing. Now I'm playing. Um, I can actually work it out. Let me just flick it across. I'm playing. Tw uh, this version's only running twenty-two. It should probably be twenty-three, which may have been where the problem was. So I took this from the Fandom Legends deck. Um, this deck should probably be on twenty-three lands, and I think that I need the when we do the, the the next the next one i will definitely up that number yeah but yeah. i think i'm gonna do that now what do i want extra uh while you're doing that i am going to update our deck lists on the uh yep. on the uh on the command here so let me yep. just do that very quickly
Jones. And this one's mine. Hopefully we can start to redeem ourselves. No, that was a strange one. It was just because it was um, it was kind of close in game three. It's just when you don't hit your third land, you're just like, ugh. Yeah. And I had to and I mulliganing to five, six, and six is I'm maybe I should have mulliganed game three, but it's kind of it's kind of meh to mulligan to five again. And oh, post board, yeah. I have so much more spells I want to find, like the fries and stuff. But no, the entrancing melody was really good. Um, yes. It was just frustrating that I could, I had God's willing in hand, but I can never hold the mana up. No, exactly, and that was that was very much what I was afraid of. If you'd, because obviously that turn you were like digging for land drop number three, and you mm -hmm. had to spend your white on defiant strike. Yeah, and it's like as long as you don't hit a white source right here, I know I yeah. get to entrancing melody. But yep. as soon as you're holding up the white source, I don't think I'm allowed to even go for it. I think I no. have to wait until I'm also holding up something else like an unsummon just to like get yep. rid of your creature afterwards. I agree. Um, hey, Sheepy, good to see you. And um, the problem with land drops. Unfortunately, we won't be using that particular card today, but we're going into a deck that does make use of very similar cards. So, should we get into our uh, yeah. our second match here, John? Yep. I like to say we're going to do these again, and I think it'd be interesting just to see playing up. I'm probably going to go up to 24 lands in the feather list because hitting your lands is so important. Up to th th I think you want to get to the fourth land and stop. Yeah. So I think you play the, f the full four temples. I like the Naya version more because you get access to Seed of Growth. And as you saw in game two, I almost pulled myself out of it at one life because I was drawing two or three extra cards a turn. Yes. And yeah. that game was quite close, actually, game game two. For for the fact that I was on one life, it was quite a little bit closer than I thought it was going to be. No, absolutely. Like, I think it was closer than it, than it maybe looked from the outside. Yeah. Well, you get to go on the play. I get to go on the play, but that is an awful hand, so we're going to send it right back. That is a uh, good hand. We well, my, my, hand. mine has zero lands in it. Uh, yeah, this one's fine. I'll keep this one. We're going to send you back. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're going to play Magic this game, which is good. Yep. I think we're going to lead on this. Oh no. Put that on the bottom. Your goal. Uh that was actually a pretty good draw. Not gonna Sweet. lie. Sweet. Ah, oh, the Jund of Dinosaurs. Indeed. This is gonna be very interesting actually as to how this matches up. If I can find not ideal, but it's fine. Oh, is this Bant Ramp as opposed to, like, Bant Other Silliness? Dinosaur, name Dinosaur, make Dinosaur. Okay. Yep. So, I do understand where you're coming from there, Sheepy, on... Uh, Otapet Hunkmaster maybe being cast first. My problem is the Raptor is the one with the higher upsides, and if my opponent manages to kill, like both of my two drops kind of do mostly the same thing, right? And as soon as you put uh, the idea of like them killing it, I'm happier with them them just like oh I'll kill the Raptor and then leave me the hunt master afterward like if if that happens then i'm fine to play the hunt master if they don't and this stays on the board then it's better um yeah optic hunt master is an interesting card actually yeah it really is uh i am really not certain as to i like it a lot i if think giving that... stuff haste is so important yeah i just like not so between it and marauding raptor yeah like which one should be played first right let's see what we can hit with this okay uh, that's actually super awkward. If that had been a real green source, we might have just taken that. But as it is, we can't play that because it's going to be too expensive. So I think we've got to take this. 
kind of just. It's not a bad one. No, it's not. Okay, then, so you're on a band flashy type thing as well. Okay, okay. Let's just see if I can just put enough power on the battlefield and make you hate life, basically. <laughs> well, we found one of those anyway, so... I think if it had been a land, we would have gone with this, but it isn't, so... Just ripped your raptor time. Let's just raptor it up, yep. Yep, yep that's fine. Is a thing. Land, red source, red and green source. Stomping ground, I'd be really happy with a stop. Yes! <laughs> Sometimes you're better lucky than good. <laughs> Absolutely! Uh, tacky, tacky, fighty, fighty. Kind of the blocks I was expecting. Because. Oh no! I am an idiot! I was like, oh, I'll still be able to cast that Otapek Huntmaster afterwards. It's like, no, no, that costs more now. Yep. Uh... I think we're taking another one of those, actually. That seems decent. Protection from blue. Okay. Yes, oh, not nice. green. I think I want to do this now. Like, I don't get the trigger, but I feel like this is more important. Uh, we'll take that one. Oh dear. Uh, pass the turn. That seemed like a very swift take there. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Right, if I do that, I can do that, and then that. Yeah, cool. I only have to take two off my land as well. It's fine. That's alright then. Resolves. Unfortunately, I have to do all of this pre-combat in case you start killing my creatures. Resolves. Because I need the power on the battlefield for this guy. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> right. Sure. Why not? Well, we've kind of got it covered, ish. Uh, Vivian can obviously tick down and get another card, and is a bit of a pain because she's giving all your stuff flash. But at the same time, I look at your life total and go, "Yeah, there's not much you can do with that life total." Well, I've got a gold on the battlefield, so uh, let's just make an O three. Yep. Uh, I'm going to life. block here. Yeah, very nice. I'll Obviously not damage. giving me the card draw there. Vigilance and reach and flash. It's a, it's a pretty, more, it makes a 3-3. Three, three. It's a pretty worthy <laughs> card, yeah. It, right. This card has a lot of text on it. I was just, just like, let's just check this a second. Let me just check oh for keywords. God, really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Really? Oh no, the draw has been nuts. So as long as you don't have settled the wreckage, I'm okay. As soon as you do have settled the wreckage, I am effed. Okay. This might be fine. Resolve. Has to attack us, okay. Might be super dead. Right, Maybe so not. You've so got three blockers. You've got one card. Oh, and that's an exiled card, isn't it? Yeah. Not that that's particularly clear, which means that it can't be a set of the wreckage. Or yep. at least it can be, but you couldn't cast it. So let's just turn them all sideways. Cavalier of Dawn. When it ends the battlefield, it destroy up to one target. Non-land permanent is controller creates a 3-3 Colors Golem artifact. When it dies, return target artifact or return from your graveyard to your no, hand. No. 
I have. This is literally worded as when it destroys target Golter. <laughs> yep, yeah, all right. That's a pretty good answer. All right, now we have to assign our blockers. I'm kind of unfortunately losing most of our board here. Yeah, but you are taking a good number of my stuff with you. As yeah. Well. And only oh, yeah, and I've still got a 4 6. And you've still got a 4 6 with Vivian. And Vivian. And a Vivian on the battlefield, exactly. So. Uh, yeah, let's just play it out. Whiff, 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 whiff. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure which. Uh, I've got a feeling like. What's the battlefield? This. I kind of need to take this. Which is not ideal because I wanted the other one. Uh, but I will pass the turn. Oh, come on. Right, I'm actually going to leave the Huntmaster back, am I? No, you can't block it. You're going to have to put the 4-6 on the Ripjaw Raptor, unless you've drawn, like, another Cavalier of Dawn, at which case, at which point, yeah, all right, sure. Yeah, I can't kill you with the Otopeak Hunt Master, and putting you to one is the same as you having you at two, so... Oh, I, come I did draw my on! <laughs> you know there's like three copies sake. of this in the deck. I have never seen this deck before. Like, Have you um, never seen the green-white bow list? <laughs> no. <laughs> I no, love this deck. I have never come across this before. And obviously, so cool. all I'm drawing is lands. Yep. <laughs> And you get extra looks and Scrylands that aren't in my deck because it's supposed to be an aggro deck. Do we have Shock in the deck anywhere? I don't even remember if I put Shock in this deck. I hope you haven't. <laughs> It'll be pretty savage if you have. You should have Lightning Strike, surely. Uh, no, I think you just need to play such a high density of creatures. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Well, That's and, interesting. And all we drew was lands anyway. So. Sure. Okay. All derp right. No worries. Herp de derp. Yeah, okay. Oh, that, Hits two oh. two fracking cavaliers off the top. Okay. We All did dig six cards to deck. find them. <laughs> um, Trust me, we, we dug six cards for them. And those can get in the deck. Um, Out right. Come. I don't know what I want to board in in this matchup. This top end seems super relevant. These do not seem at all relevant. I don't really want to bring this in. So let's bring in these. Um, maybe I want. Do I want to do that? I think this seems really irrelevant. And you, this doesn't kill anything relevant. Oh, no, I want that one still. Huh. Yeah, okay, let's try that. Not 100% convinced on it, but let's try it. Have too many big creatures around. Let's try this. Let's try this configuration. I like that we have quite a lot of time, but it's like you um you aren't limited on how much how much cyborg you can do. You have a bit more time on it. Yeah, they seem to be flip flopping on whether that should be the case. Um, I think it's really good in direct challenge. Yeah, I think absolutely. My personal opinion is that in direct challenge there should be no time limits on basically anything, unless you're putting it in like tournament mode. Sure. Oh yeah, no, no, I agree. I think in this it's kind of like it doesn't matter. You're playing probably playing with friends anyway. Good hand. Good hand is good. We will keep right. the good hand. When you're ready, then. Uh, so. Wow, he has a land. Oh, he's commute. Sorry, there are no Lanowar elves in the deck. It's commute with dinosaurs. Should get my uh, memory up to speed. 
there were actually the, the the older version that I was playing uh, like a couple of days ago that I'd found and was like, hmm, this this has ladder rollers in it. Let's try it. And it's like, no, no. The the red mana dogs are just so much better in yes, the deck. Yes, agreed. Which is why we shall be removing the red mana dog from the deck. No, no removing my red mana dog. Yeah, all right. That's, that seems reasonable. I mean, yeah, I don't want you to have that card. Backup. Yeah, I, I thought you'd have something else. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, though, going from, like, three to four is just such a bigger deal than yep. theoretically having uh, a four to five here. Tulsimir, you say. Yep. And left it on top. All right. That's a good draw. Oh no, that that is part of the reason I kept the hand. No, I mean it's good. Like the card is really, really powerful for obvious reasons. Yeah. Oh hello. Oh hello. <laughs> well, aren't you a good draw? That doesn't make me happy. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, no, I like this. It's a good draw. When you have the um, the shifting ceratops as well, mm -hmm. that's fine. We'll give it haste. Okay. And then we'll give this one haste. Sure. Kind of feel like I'm. I am Don't trying bring... very much to force you into some blocks. Oh, well, the ambush is a good start. Uh, might as well give it trample yep. and get one extra. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I actually, uh, I got someone earlier. They let through a Ripjaw Raptor and uh, blocked with four toughness the uh, wow. Ceratops as I attacked a Teferi with five loyalty. And nice. I was like, give it trample. And, and then the Teferi goes good. away and they're like, oh, sad now. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunately... This is a pretty rough spot to be in, I think, for me. Your, yep. uh, your creatures are simply better and it's possible that I should actually play the land here first. Yeah. I do not believe there are any other wolves in the deck, but I also don't believe there's any way of getting stuff back from the graveyard. Well, so... Night Pack ambushes a wolf, and it makes wolves. Oh, of course it does. Yes. Yep. Right, okay, well, let's play that land now. Let's make Vivian. Yeah. Let's take that. I feel like this is the line. Okay, interesting, interesting. Oh, -ho. well, that was a very good draw. That's not what I wanted to hit. Because we get to do this. That's pretty good. And then this. You have got... Wow. <laughs> okay. Must be uh, nice. Oh, dang it. Auto tap, tap has screwed me on this one, though. Because I was like, oh, yeah. And I'll still be able to trample. Good old auto tapper helping out your opponent for once. You have a Golter. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, Stop but whinging. you just know you're going to find one of the fucking... Uh, Cavaliers that blows it up, turns graveyard. it into a free, free free. I can also go in the graveyard. This trades, which is fine. Yeah, that's pretty good. Again, if the auto tapper hadn't screwed me, I would have got in for another two points of damage there. I know. Oh, no. Not that it's going to matter too much. If you find the Cavalier, it's really bad for me. If you don't, we're in a good spot. Smith went to wolves. Okay. Unfortunately, the wolf itself is legendary, so that only really put three yep. power and toughness in the battlefield. Yep. I have no cards in hand, so I cannot discard yep. anything. Probably 
probably shouldn't have played that land there, but whatever. Yeah, you've got to do this. You'll go to two. Yeah, definitely shouldn't have played that land there. That was dim of me. No, didn't find anything. Yay. All right, game three. Golter carrying me hard. <laughs> Get carried. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what I'm planning on having happen at the team event. It's I'm gonna lose all of my rounds oh. and get hard carried. By Are Alex. you actually playing this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, it's good. Like it's good against like things like feather because feather struggles to kill Golter. Yes. Or anything like you might just die before you do anything, and that's obviously an issue. But like the not having removal spells against feather is quite challenging. Yeah, I mean, Especially if if they have a decent draw, it's hard. Mm. So the the other the other thing that I kind of want to check out, uh, I think I'm just going to resubmit. I don't think there's any changes that I want to make. Uh, the other thing that I want to check out uh, is hero decks. Like sure. uh, Jim Davis did a Mardu hero thing, basically yep. because less people are playing removal at the moment, which means that yep. your hero actually survives. Uh, it's yeah, a that's risky fair. keep, but it is a keep. Mine's a bit risky as well. Oh, that was a decent draw. Dece to dece plus, in fact. That was a decent. That was a good draw for me. Might actually get me to have a game of magic. It's a raptor. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I don't know why this guy doesn't have like a really cool sound effect. Though. I'm sad about this. Well, hello there. Uh, it has to go in the graveyard. That also has to go in the graveyard. Ooh, we're digging for lands here. Yep. Right then, well, I think we'll uh, fire this yeah. off. It's a pretty good one. Yeah. I could offer up the trade here. I just, I really like the Marauding Raptor just being on the battlefield. Yep. I think. I think I'm gonna leave it there because you would you would absolutely take that trade and that is just way better for you. Yep, agreed. Your your, your ranger does nothing now. It's just nope. a four three. My creature is actually vaguely important. Yes, agreed. Um, right. So this is gonna be uh, a heck of a turn. Really? Yeah. Lovely. Dinosaur. Galter. Jesus Christ. Well, yeah. When this deck works, it really works. Yeah, I can see that. And I don't think it's a I don't think this is its actual legitimate draw either, which is strange. I I I don't think this is a, uh, an average draw like these last two games you've drawn insanely well. Yeah, I, oh absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, I'll give you that one. Binning the Cavalier was obviously not ideal, but it had to be done. It had to be done. If you're looking for lands, having a five drop while you've only got three lands is not where you want to be. Nah, we're not going to pull ourselves out of that, unfortunately. No. Oh, that is tedious, that is. Yep. The goal to draws are really dumb. The draws with the no, accelerants are wasn't. really dumb. When you combine them, they're just it wasn't. Dumb. It wasn't the um, it wasn't the Golter. It was the Marauding Raptor, and yeah. you playing correctly with it. That was all. Yeah. It was challenging. It's like it's one of those games that I can probably I have to bin the uh, I have to bin the Cavalier because I need the lands. Yeah. And if I don't, then I probably win that one because I make a four six and I have a, a Tulsum, I have a Tulsimir in hand, which. Mm. It gains me three and trades off one for one with your Regisaur. I just never got to... Like, your draw was too good. That was the problem. Yeah. I do think that deck needs removal spells because I don't know how you win otherwise if you don't find Golter. Like, I, I think game one was probably the example where it's how do you win if they remove Golter. So, I will uh, say, like, post-board, you do pick up a lot. And obviously, I brought in a fair amount against you there. Um you know, I, I not that we I, saw any of it. No, no. Well, it was stuck in my hand in game three because you didn't play. You played one creature, and I was like, "I'll yeah. trade off of that. That's fine." Uh, yeah. In the sideboard, you've got three cast down and two noxious drafts. 
grass sure. in this version. Yeah, yeah, and Seems reasonable. Noxious Grasp is okay again in the matchup. Yeah, yeah, and I did. I mean, I did bring them in. Yeah, no, I agree. I, you, you have to. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good card because you probably have more dead cards. Like shifting Ceratops is not great in this matchup. No, I did take a couple of those out at least. Um, I think I left like one or two in just because they're yeah. big dumb creatures. You can't drop your creature count too much. I think one of the cards that I pull, I keep pulling out is Collision Colossus. As much as I like it. Uh, yeah, that card just, can go out definitely. It can just go and just be turned yeah. into an actual removal spell. No, definitely. And you do have like uh, Domri, Anarch of yeah. and Savage Stomp in the main board, but yep, I'm just gonna turn my lights on quickly. Yeah, absolutely. It's gone a bit dark, isn't it? But suddenly we can see John again. And Put my lights on so I can see yeah. what I'm doing. Right then, let me sort out the uh, the link for the last couple of decks that we, we're going to be uh, showing up here. Oh, sorry, folks. Well, it's going really well so far. Both my decks have failed me in this game, one game one, and then failed me in game two and game three. Yep. It's a good start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I will say that I've been having some very good luck, and you've been having some very poor luck. Uh, it is what it is at the end of the day. You can't always, uh, you can't plan these things. No, absolutely, and you take the good with the bad. Yeah, magic is is a game of variance. You you take what you can get, right? Yeah, um, I think if, I think if John Dinosaurs becomes a thing, though, the Salt Eye Flash decks look so good. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, the Marauding Raptor makes everything cheaper a little bit of a problem, but like when you can play on their end step so efficiently, it's really good. I I think John Dinosaurs is a really good list. I just don't want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> as bad as it sounds, it's just a, a not a deck that interests me. It's been fun. I don't know if I'd be interested in playing it uh, tournament level. Like it's fine on arena because you just like again, 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 again. I think you'd Whereas, be good. I think you'd be good at a tournament. I, I no, I think it'd be a good choice. I don't think I would be particularly interested in it though because you're sitting there and you're like, oh okay, yeah, I either lose fast or I win fast, and yeah. then I'm bored for the next you know thirty five minutes or something. Yeah. And the problem is you can just get stonewalled by the scapeshift deck if it goes fast enough. Yep. Which is another thing to bear in mind. <laughs> like the the scapeshift deck is obviously very good against it. Like John Dinosaurs is interesting. Like shifting Ceratops is a card that I'm interested in. Yes. Yeah. That that card just seems really good at a lot of stuff at the moment. Uh, Conflict Diamond points out that John Dinos is supposed to be very good against tempo decks just because it has a very high raw power level. Yes. And I can 100%. totally see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. One hundred percent. Right, let's get into this I'm... last this last uh, just, matchup. Just hold on one minute. What I want to do is I want to quickly pull out your the the chat from the channel so I can see it because at the moment I don't want to look at the game, but I want to look at the chat so I can obviously interact as well. Yeah. <laughs> Being a bit blind to everything. Yeah. I think it's just one of those ones where all right, let me quickly chat settings. Moved Pop out the screen yeah. so John can't see what we're playing. Okay, let's get rid of Twitch again. Obviously, exclamation point decks, and you will uh, be able to see both mine and John's deck for this last one. Yep. Well, bearing in mind it's only quarter to nine, we've got plenty of time still to do some more games. I'm just having a look at other decks that I can build and just have some <laughs> fun with. Like, that's what I love doing. I just love playing different decks. Like, I'll pull out. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's 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 get through this one, and we'll we'll have a. I'll if I can win one, then I'll play this against another deck that you've got. I okay. I think this might be one of the best of the three, theoretically for winning events. But yeah, I I question this deck's power level at the moment, uh, given what's going on in the format. But sure. it's very much my uh, I enjoy this style of deck. Sure, it's not necessarily my favouritist style of deck but it is very much the style of deck that uh, a style of yeah. deck that i enjoy okay right then come at me then teferi let's go <laughs> i will play first and i will hmm. well that's uh that's a heck of a hand right there sorry folks uh I don't know if this is going to be good enough. I think it's going to be too slow. That's a way better hand. That's like 10 million times better. We will keep that. This hand looks fine. 
given the land situation, I kind of kind of want to bin this thing. It's just so much lower power when I have all the you know, the cards in my hand. Okay, okay. Uh huh. So at least soul toy. That was a very good draw. Why is it you're allowed good draws today? What what is this? Well, let's see what you're playing with anyway. Oh, well, let's get rid of this. Yeah. And we'll leave that one on top. Uh, that may not be incorrect, but it's fine. Uh, let's leave that there. It's probably fine. Uh, I will be sending a message to my opponent. I have received said message. Yeah. It has made me sad. Good. <laughs> I probably should have done it differently, but uh, it is what it is. Okay. I literally the problem was I I thought Erasure took that card and then drew a removal spell for the for the hero. Which <laughs> <laughs> was one of those ones where it's like, oh, what a tilter. Uh, yeah, I shall take your message again, sir. Uh, yeah, all right. Go on then. What you got? Oh. Oh. Well, all right. Oh dear, that's a good one. What did we reveal? Aha! That's what's going on. Yeah, right. Message received, sir. And understood. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Message received and understood. Right, okay. Uh, this is going to be a pretty good turn, I think. Lovely. Just what I wanted. Let's take that up. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's got Kaya's Wrath at instant speed. Interesting. Oh no! No! I meant to let you draw first. Yeah, that's still pretty good, though. Yeah, I know. Uh... Like, don't beat around. That was a pretty good draw. Yeah, yeah. No, it definitely was. I think we will. Uh... Yeah, but I, I meant to let you draw there. That was silly of me. It wouldn't matter. Yay! It didn't matter. Oh wow! Nice draw. Uh. Land to ferry because you've had everything. Well, there we go. Land five and to ferry. Why not? Got to have it. Uh, yeah. It's just ferry does every spell. Yep. Not just one, all of them. Wow, you. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. You didn't draw another thought of Rager. Well. Uh, that was not what I wanted to draw. Yeah, if I'd drawn another Thought Erasure, that would have been completely over the top. Yep. Something like that. No, uh, it's because I wasn't able to take Teferi 3 because I didn't have the removal spell for the hero. And then I it, then I found a removal spell on top of my deck. It's just like, dude, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Can't uh, do nothing with that. It's good for later, just in case, but it's actually not great here. Um, yeah, all right. Let's take two here. And, yep, yeah, that's tapped perfectly fine. Yep. Yeah. The dream. Actually. No, I don't want to, to get rid of that. So what we're actually going to do is... Uh... Bounce it, play it again. Uh, no, we're actually going to play this this time. Why is that in your deck? Uh, I'm testing it. I, w I will be perfectly honest, I am just testing it. I do not know if it is even remotely good. Sure. Oh, well, I drew another Arboreal Grazer, so I'm going to concede this game. Yep, fair enough. It might have taken me another ten minutes, but I would have killed you. Yep. 
that was uh, that was a de that was a depressing one to lose. Hmm. All right. Right, I want to know what Yarrick does because I can't remember. He makes things trigger twice. Yep. And does he make your legends cheaper as well? Is that the same? No, one? no. It's just whenever something ETBs, it triggers twice. Okay. Okay. And he doesn't like replay things from the graveyard. Okay, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Well, let's have another go, see if we can win this one. Because so far we're 0 and 3. And it's not exactly been my best day of drawing so far. Oh my goodness me. My decks have hated me today. So we're going to get rid of those. They're very medium. And that's probably not great in this matchup. I think I'm bringing you back in. Because at least got. Some answers to the nonsense. I, hope I, I just think that all three of your decks have matched up incredibly well because this is a horrible matchup for you against the uh, the, the green white list. Oh yeah, because it's all yeah. played at instant speed. Wow, yeah. that's fine. We'll keep this one. Yeah, all right, we'll keep this. A little bit concerned that no white mana, a little bit concerned that we've got not much in the way of proactive, but I think we can play the control game in this matchup pretty well. And, uh, yeah, Com Conflict Diamond points out the Big Teferi leaves the format in about 60 days, so... Yeah, but that's not the problem. Little Teferi's the problem. Okay, so... You all right? <laughs> what the actual... Yeah, all right, all right. So many Skylands. Yeah, I mean, it didn't matter. I'd rather play the Skylands so out. So and... many tap lands in this deck. You've got Memorial to Genius as well. Jeez. Yep. Yeah, you need because you need to be able to trigger the Field of the Dead. Okay, well that's getting negated. Yep. Figured. I'd rather not give you the uh, ability to look at extra cards as well. We're already struggling enough. That's a good draw. Well, that's not. What We found something to do. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking for land number four, shall we? Wow. You drew three thought erasures. Oh, my goodness me. Yep, I even surveilled one to the top after I saw that you had the negate. Wow. Little bit sketchy, keeping a Thought Erasure when you have no... I would have definitely have been that one, because you have no white mana. Well, now you do. Well, yeah, I, I figured off of the next two, one of them's going to resolve and I get another look then. Sure. Um, and I and I, my hand's got like removal spells and that sort of thing in it. So sure. Is this... Enters, yeah, I thought so. Cool, we'll... Uh, pass the turn, leave it be for the moment then. I suppose that's just a good card. Uh, it's not ideal. Not a great draw. Let's make a thing. Uh, yeah, you're making a thing. I think response, we're going to kill this reasonably. Okay. Seems reasonable. Yep. Because that is an elemental. Would yes. trigger the reef. Let you do your thing. Gate Nexus of ne this is a Nexus of Fate deck. It's a one of. Okay. All uh, right. It's it's yeah. It's putting Time Walk in your Monastery Mentor deck in Legacy. Yeah, sort of pretty thing. much. Yeah. All right. All right. 
Like I say, my hand is flush with removal spells. Oh. Uh, I'm going to put the Risen Reef back on top of my deck. Yep. Because Yorok isn't going to do anything in this situation. Sweet, there we go. Man number five. Wow. Well, okay. Because Teferi's a thing. Yep, because Teferi is a perfectly fair and reasonable magic card. But the, th the thing is, it's not the best. It's not the best one either. It's the worst one. The three to fairy three is so much more powerful. In certain situations, definitely, definitely. Right? Did we hit another elemental here? Yeah, it's looking like a Yarok or something. Yara could be pretty rough here. Trophy, big teffers. Yeah. Yep. Wait, what? No way. <laughs> You've only got one basic. The strip mine is here. This deck <laughs> only runs one ver one basic. Wow. What is this version wow. I am playing? No, that's uh. That's that trust really me. Bad. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had realized that. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. This is super not value play, and yeah, I'm still going to do it. Oof. Yep, I do not enjoy doing this. Do yeah, I have yeah. any basics? Oh, I do. I still have a basics. Sweet. Oh, pro blue. Bad times. Yeah, the uh, the standard format has become such that yeah, our lands look very much like modern decks at the moment. Yeah. Come on. Who might be able to steal a win? Okay, well, I think we're just going to have to go for this and see what we hit. Oh my goodness, what on earth is that in your deck? <laughs> what? Really good is apparently the answer. So. Oh wow, that's that's interesting. That is. Ooh. Why you oh. hit creatures? Oh, this game is over. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> For fuck's sake. So uh. this is why I'm playing this version of the deck, because it doesn't matter so much if you have um, uh, things like uh, Adept to Detentions, because I, I don't scape shift. There is no scape shifts in this deck. Instead, I just Risen Reef you into next Tuesday. Resolves. That's fine. That's, that is That is fine. Well, I mean, that one works as well. Kaya's Wrath? Uh, sort of. Sure. That's good. It's a good card. That is also fine. That says gain a life. Okay. Yep. I'm okay with that at the moment, to be perfectly honest with you, John. Yep. Uh, yep, we've played our land for the turn. This is This is getting really grim. Because every time you play a creature, uh, play a land rather.
Oh my god. Take one of them. <laughs> All of the deputies of detention. Yep. Uh, go. What we got on top? Uh, that's actually fine. Resort. It gains you a life, sir. It does indeed. You're now at two. I cannot cast that, but... You can this. just cast things from your hand. Yeah. Resolves. Resolves. Takes all of those things away. Put myself back up to three. I'm just going to do this now. I didn't want you to do that. I take one. Make a Cavalier of Thorns. Oh, God. Uh, I will take a Blast Zone. Yeah, that seems real good. Do you like my deck? You just you just value all of the time. Uh, yes. So you know you've deputed detention me twice now. This is why this deck is so good. Because you've deputed me twice now. Well, I tell you what. Bolas' Citadel is not something I expected from the deck. I'm not going to lie. No, it's been running around in a few different lists, actually, and uh, has seemed fine. Has seemed pretty good, actually. What are you targeting? It doesn't have pro blue, so we'll target that one. Uh, I Have you played a land this turn? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Then we will have to Assassin's Trophy this now. Because I can't. Because if you still to play a land, well, then you'll just recast it, and I don't really want that. Library. And we can't cast that to fairy for five. We dead. Cool. What's, what was your hand? Land and. Uh, Temple of Silence. It was two lands. Uh, te no, 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 Jack. It's Temple of. Shh. <laughs> right. Okay. I think we want that in. And I think we want. Annoyingly, Sauron actually looked better than I kept giving it credit for. That seems maybe worth taking out. Actually. Could no, it's got four of those silly cards, and so we can't do that. I'm just gonna do that. Oh, what are you still doing in the deck? Yep, all right, let's try it this way. I can definitely build another one of these decks. Yeah, we can definitely play some different decks. I can definitely build another one. Uh, no, I like the look of the Yarok list. I'm just... It is really good. I, I really like it. Uh, better. Uh, better. I will mulligan this one. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this one. It's not great, but we'll keep... keep. I'm going to bottom... Uh, I kind of want to bottom one of these. Probably the first time I've ever wanted to bottom that card. 
Come on! That'll do. That's fine. It's not ideal, but it's fine. Yep, that is fine. You occasionally forget that this is a hero deck. Yeah, I mean it's good, right? Hero, hero, hero. Is, <laughs> hero is in the deck for a reason. The card is good. Yep. We've got my hand of three drops. That is a lot of free drops. There's also a thought erasure that I don't think I particularly care about. Uh, yeah. I think we're gonna take the Risen Reef this time, maybe. Yeah, I think that's worth taking. And that can stay right there. Mm. Do something with our turn. Yep, absolutely. Kind of have to take this. I'll try and build a bit of a battlefield and maybe get in for some extra damage. Or Probably. Do I save this. I think I actually have to do this. Okay, that's interesting. Cool. Seems unreasonable. I need to beat you in the face. Um. Yep. Big years. Figures. Oh, there are three more there are more cards in that graveyard now. Yeah, they are. No, I'm I'm doing this feeling on the fact that I have to try and do something. Yeah. But I think Oh wow. Yep. Wow. Okay. I, I did just rip that one off the top. I'm pretty Ooh, happy with it. That's rough that is. Ugh. No, your, we're not dead yet. You, you just showed me last game how good your value engine is, so yep. the plan is to not let you get there, basically. Yep. You can have a noxious grasp or a noxious grasp. Oh, you can get both noxious grasps. Land off the top one time. If you find the land off the top, we'll uh, we'll have another go at this matchup. Uh, I did not, uh, but I think you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Well, let's just replay this matchup because this matchup seems really interesting. It actually really does, yeah. Like I'm so used to the 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 Esper deck pivoting into being a control deck that when yep. you showed me just how good your end game was in game two. And the answer is, I can't beat that, so I have to beat you first. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, so yeah, that's just uh, trying to trying to figure out exactly what it is your opponent's deck's doing where you're not 100% certain on, on what their game plan is. Uh... For a game one hand, this is probably keepable. It's not great. That sounds keepable. Uh, let's go with the temple. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this one. Love them scrylands. Yep, that works. Yep. Well, we're not going to have the same mistake as last time. <laughs> that one can go bye bye. <laughs> that one can go in the graveyard now, thank you. Yep. That one can disappear. Ooh. Um, this is a little awkward. Yuck. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I don't really know what this card does in the deck, which is really strange. It's just, um, you know, I. 
gains you a little bit of life for the uh, the citadel b it's a death toucher so it can kill the bigger green creatures that you have trouble with in game one sure and c which is fair. Help, helps you find your land drops which yeah that's fair it's a one it's got death touch and lifelink so it can still block pretty well exactly Let's give it a bit. all right the blocking is not irrelevant <laughs> I also like this when it deals combat damage as well. It's really important. Yes. Oh, what on earth is my deck doing right now? <sighs> hey, Loki, tricky. Um, oh, wow. So you're at four lands, so... This was my problem. I've drawn now three of my Teferi, Hero of Dominarias, and I've had to bin bunches of them. Check out the Matt Nass deck. Uh, my mic is quite low. Uh, come on. Let me turn up a bit. Yeah, try it about there. Does that? Yeah, that looks a little bit better. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, well, we found land number five. Unfortunately, my hand has been entirely stripped of everything. That's why. I, that's why I had to go for the double, um, double effect. And uh, we don't get to attack now. Because <laughs> I really need that card on top. Possibly I should have attacked first and then... But I know that the best card was in my hand. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Land six, here comes Orgin. Eugene! Eugene is going to manifest some some manifesty thingies. Uh, I mean, you can put the top card of your library straight in the graveyard if you want. Uh, doesn't really do anything for me. Like, there's... I mean, there is Soren. Yeah, all right, we'll attack. Why not? I will declare no blocks. I didn't think you would. Filled with that land away. Seems good. <laughs> Unintentionally great. Okay. Okay. <sighs> right. So, I think... Yep. Yep. And then we do that. And then that. Um, I am indeed in a little bit of trouble right now. I will admit that. Shoot you for two. Ha ha. Relevant rules text. Right. Right. Um. Yep. Mm. No, let's just have that one. Just gonna let you draw me cards. That's fine. Of course, if we've got a thought erasure, but we don't. Nice. Yep. I now regret. I now regret. You what? Regret what? Many, many things, John. <laughs> many, many Fair things. Enough. Uh... <laughs> right, so we can do that. That. That's four blockers up. Oh, nice. Five blockers up. Uh, protect Ugin. Yeah, all right. Yep. Well, you got. And uh, is it just a land? Oh, it's just a Yarok. Oh, okay. 
Well, that spare land can go in the graveyard. And yep. Then we shall... Uh, ooh, should we just blow up the Yarok? Yarok works with... If they permanent... Everything. Yeah, okay. We should probably just blow up the Yarok then. Yep. Yep, seems pretty good. Obviously, I'd rather make John's uh, John's stupid zombie land a little bit worse. Yeah, okay. seems reasonable. Hey, block here, block here, block here, block here. Ugin takes two. Yep. Yarok will go back on top of the library with the Cavalier of Thorns, but there's not a massive amount I can actually do about that. I don't think. Yeah. Ugin actually seems so. This this was a, a list that I I picked up and was like, huh, that's an interesting like addition. It's fourth Ugin instead of uh, sorry, first Ugin instead of fourth to fairy, and I'm a little bit like, really? Is that is that the way we're going? But having now seen the number of like sideboards that have got things like um, uh, noxious grasp in them, yeah, you left sort of going. Ugin's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So I really like Ugin. I always have done. Resin Reef. Right, what's what's on top? Okay, cool. That works. Another Temple of Shh. Temple of Shh. Uh, you can stay there, actually. You're pretty good. John? One second. Uh, yes, you can attack. And then I'm going to ask you to pick oh, up wow. your zombies. Nice. Yeah, that was that was what I regretted. It was under the second spirit, and I was like, I would like the Hero of Precinct 1 as opposed to the Deputy of Detention. And then obviously you, you played Yarok Land and made a bunch of zombies. I was like, huh. Wish I just had the deputy of detention. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, time to reassemble. Yeah, exactly. This deck definitely does it really well. Oh my god, seriously? Are you for real? Okay. Milling yourself a lot, but I don't think it's going to end up mattering. There's a nexus in the deck. Oh, of course there is. You can never mill out, can you? Nope. It's the enjoyable bit about this deck. Right, what we got? Mm. We might be wanting to pick that one up at some point. Uh, for now. Oh, you get rid of my Risen Reef. How could you? What a monster. Aren't I just... So this is just value engine versus value engine, and we see whose who's is better. Yep, pretty much. And unfortunately, you got rid of all of my big Teferis, so I don't even have like that going for me at the moment. Well, oh, I actually good. binned two of them myself. Oh my god. So many Field of Deads. Kind of feel like I need to get rid of this now. Yep. Yep, that's going to really shut me down. And, Let's uh, not allow you to draw more cards. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we died. We, uh, we, we fucking died. It was that double thought erosion turn was so broken. It was the really powerful one. Um. No, none of none of what I'm doing matters anymore. So, yeah, okay. all right. Yeah, the the I think it, it, it's strange this matchup because we've seen the two sides of it. Obviously, we saw that one where I won game one, the last one where I lost game one. Yeah. If I can get going. This deck will bury you. 
if I can't, we'll probably die. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we need that. Annoyingly. Right, so what did we take out? We took out the Lich, the Guard Mages, and that was it. Oh no, we must have taken something else out because I pulled, pulled that in, didn't I? Oh, it was one of those, wasn't it? I think, having played the game a few times now, I think Hero's the way you win. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. More so than anything else in your deck, the Hero is what allows you to play a game of Magic. Like, yeah. Ugin was really good in that game, but I have, like, a one-for-one one one removal spell against Ugin's pretty good. Yep. But it was just a hero was able, like, especially in game three of the last series, where the hero just gets you going so much faster. Uh, this is a horrible hand. Yeah, well, join me here on six, but I'll be going to five. Oh, that's better, but... Uh, I'm going to keep six. It's not great, but it's playable. I'm going to have to keep this five, and I'm going to be distinctly okay. disappointed in it. Trust me, my hand's not fast. We'll play a game of ma we will play a game of magic in this game. I would be very much surprised if we don't. It's worth having one of those two in. So here's yes. a here's a strange one for you. I would rather be playing the old Mulligan with a Scry with the Yarok deck than the Banku than the London Mulligan rule. Huh? Because I think going to redrawing a six with a Scry on top is so re is really important because this isn't a deck that needs a density of individual spells. Yep. It needs the lands to cast them, and I think that the maybe the mulligan put, not looking at the top of your deck, I think might hurt it a little bit. I do really like this deck a lot. I'm really enjoying it. I probably can't buy it in paper. Might be a little bit too expensive. Yeah, like got, there's a lot of individual parts of it that are quite expensive, right? Like, Garrock won't be that bad, but the Cavalier of Thorns isn't cheap. Yeah, that's a good start. I'm a bit scared of ramping you. No, I think we have to. I don't really want to leave this in play. That's fair. We should tick down on it, but whatever. You're always going to do that, aren't you? Yep. Yeah, nice. Field of the Dead. Uh, that's a good pickup for later. Like, ramping you to five is a bit scary, but sure, it's only another time raveler. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think we're going to go up again. Okay. Whew. Well, that's not what we wanted to see. Go on. Yes. Nice. We found something good. Land to cast Ugin. Oh, wow, nice. Which is a little bit punishing for this line that I took. Yep. I should have done it straight away, but it's fine. It is what it is. We're not dead yet. Oh, that's annoying. There was a Teferi on top of my library. Good job it's not there anymore, then. <laughs> Just a tad. But the main thing is I now actually get to play my five drop. Okay, well, two thought erasures, Elvis Rejuvenator, and a Field of the Dead into the graveyard. Field of the Dead onto the battlefield. And a uh, time thingy in, in hand. Uh, right, we're going to tick up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Tick up. Not a bad multi five, mate. <laughs> no, no, I'm not unhappy with how it's going. I will admit that. Uh, let's go and we'll draw them extra cards. That seems great. 
Uh, yeah. I guess that's going to resolve. <laughs> it looks really good against the empty board state you had a minute ago. Yeah, it certainly does. When you're ready, mate. Yeah. I'm definitely keeping the card I found on top. Like, it's a good card to have. Like, it depends. You could plus Ugin, then Downtick, and, well, then... Kai's Wrath and get two cards, not the end of the world. Or you can do it at instant speed, I suppose. That's also relevant. Alright then. Okay, so the question becomes, do I assume that I'm Wrathing this turn anyway? Or do I protect against the Thought Erasure? Well, actually, protecting against the Thought Erasure doesn't... doesn't change what happens. Targeting my Teferi the Time Raveler, you say? Yeah, that's a bit of a tilt. Not gonna lie. Kind of feel like I want to make this now. Okay. Now you're gonna wrath anyway. This gives me more things to do. Let's put this land into play. Enters tapped. Three, four. So shifting ceratops, which is nice. Triggers my fields of the dead. Obviously, you now have to do it. Yep. Yep. Mate. You're not down on cards exactly yet, mate. No, I know. But I have no way of getting these Field of the Deads out of, off of the battlefield. Yep. Like this deck just does not. Uh... Hey, Brave. Uh, Scape Shift is what basically the most relevant card uh, deck in standard at the moment, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's the best one. Like this might be a close second because you, a lot of people are building decks to beat the Scape Shift deck, which obviously includes Deputy Detentions, which you got Garrock just doesn't care about, or particularly cares about anyway. So it's kind of one of those ones where it, it depends on how you want to look at it as to how good something is. Um, there's a lot of good things happening though in the format, which is really good. Oh wow! You got another time. You hit double to fairy on that last turn. <laughs> What one of them one of them was under a manifest uh so just ripped the other one basically yeah 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 the, the challenge of escape shift is you do get hated out in post board games which is why this yarrow might be the best version of field of the dead post board because you play an average mid-range deck that just happens to also smash your opponent's face yeah. in yeah you're you exactly you're a mid-range deck that occasionally just kills people with creatures from your lands Okay then. That is deeply annoying. Yeah, let's leave that one. I should want to hit that. Oh, yeah, well. the White Black Vampires deck has also been getting a lot of hype. I know Emma Handy did a. Um, bleh, like a, a deck tech over on the SCG um, select side of things. And yeah. it's not exactly like, oh, come on. Are you fracking kidding Dude, me? Dude, you get to draw like two cards this turn. Yeah, doesn't matter if they're all in lands. <laughs> well, this is just, this is, this is called karma. You should know this, Jack. This is called karma. You can't always have what you want in magic. We don't all live in magical Christmas land. Right, okay, well, we're going to have to do this. Yeah. Uh, wow. If you want John's, if you want John's list, uh, exclamation point decks should bring up both mine and John's deck, deck list. I mean, this is basically Jeff Hoogland's list at the moment, and he's really high on this list. Like, he thinks it'll be either this or... 
Um, it'll be this or another one other deck that he'll take to the MCQ that he's going to soon. He thinks the deck's really good, and I I, I agree. I think this deck is dumb. <laughs> like the stuff you can do with it is obnoxious to say the least. What we got? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're gonna time wipe me. Nope, we're just removing the Yarok. Okay. Yep. Do you know the problem is your lands don't do anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. Like, when I draw extra lands, they're useless. And I've just realised I played the wrong land that turn anyway. Do you have a wrath effect in hand? Uh, maybe. I'll do a yes. Okay, so we're going after Teferi, Time Raveler, pretty hardcore here. Uh, sorry, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, pretty hardcore here. Uh, okay, well, we're going to do... What one are we trying to save here? Kill one of those. Block two of them. It only takes... Four goes to two. And Teferi Time Raveler dies. That's fine. Yep. Sure. Right then, we're going to block there. There. Then that one's going to block yeah, that one. Yeah, take the free block. Yep. And... Yeah, Teferi Time Raveler dies. Teferi Hero of Dominaria goes to two loyalty. And Ugin gives me the card underneath that. Which was, very helpfully, just another freaking land. Oh no, come on. And you want to know it's even better this time? There's a Risen Reef to go with him. Oh my god. Uh, I think you wanted to play those the other way around, actually. You would have gotten free Risen Reef yeah, triggers. Yeah, no, I realise that now. Oh, yeah. that's fine. That one can that one can happily stay where it is. Yeah, no, we, uh, we're having a real hard time here. Actually, let's... Uh... Nope, that's going to go on the bottom. Well, we've still got the Teferi activation. There's definitely ways that he gets out of this one. Yeah. If you don't find something now, you probably just die. Yep, I cannot find something now, so I am just dead. Yep, cool, dead. Yeah, <laughs> so as you say, as soon as you get going, it fucking buries you. Yeah. Um, but the main thing to obviously just take into account with this deck is it's much better when your opponent's trying to uh, mess around with, like, if you get it, so you cast Scape Shift. And yeah. they cast like a Legion's End. It's like, okay, cool. This deck is like, make six zombies. You cast Legion's End. Sweet, let's go again. Yeah, yeah. All I'm doing is playing creatures that put lands into play anyway. So yeah, I'll either find a land and make one to two to possibly four zombies, or I will find a creature that does the same thing. Um, yes. I, I really like it. Um, I mean, it's yeah, Blood Sun is an interesting... <laughs> The, the fact that that's had to start seeing play in standard is really interesting as like a, a hate card. But um, uh, to be fair, initially they started playing that card to allow them to play Lotus Field without losing anything. Yeah. Um, or just Alpine Moon is probably like Alpine Moon might just be better because there's only one mana and you only need to target the Field of the Dead anyway. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely that um, aspect. Like, short, sure, like it, it does turn off like the Scry and the life game, but most of the thing you want to do with it is just basically say, no, you may not have your Field of the Dead triggers. But, and that's the challenge with playing a Field of the Dead deck, is there are a lot of people are now starting to stock up on sideboard ways of of beating it. Yeah. Um, whereas I could put together the ramp list that's been doing well. Not, not for tonight, I don't think. <laughs> no, no, not for tonight, but I'm just, like, I own, I should own, let me just double check. Uh, my imported deck. 
what am I missing from it? Probably the, the voracious hydras. And yeah, so I basically can build the um, the ramp list, mm. which doesn't play Field of the Dead at all. So then that if people are going to go heavily down the route of things like Alpine Moon, Blood Sun, as Conflict Diamond says, and other cards of that ilk, then you might just be better going back to the, man, the mass manipulation deck or the ramp yeah. list. Obviously, the, the significant difference between the ramp and the mass manipulation deck is the ramp deck is going into Finale of Glory, Voracious Hydra, and just trying to make massive monsters. Mm. Um, the, the mass manipulation deck is obviously going towards mass manipulation, so you have two different win conditions, effectively. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's which sort of which poison you want to you basically pick your poison at that point of which you'd prefer to do yep um and the, the escape shift might just be the best thing because unless you're at a high level tournament people just may not respect the deck true uh right then i think we're going to call it there for this evening i think there's been a, a good a good look at uh at some of these decks um i would point out though conflict armor has put up this 50 percent of fandom and this week is escape shift that's uh, depressing yeah, so you need to start stuck another way to beat it. Yeah, all right. So there are right there are multiple. So before we do go, there are multiple yeah. ways to beat Scape Shift. There are two. There are very simple ways. If you're in red, you play Alpine Moon or Blood Sun. Yeah. That's a pretty or, and Flame Sweep. They're Flame pretty sweep, good yeah. starting points. Uh, like the Jun Dinosaurs list is very interesting playing Flame Sweep because it's a wrath effect that triggers your enraged creatures. Yeah, and basically yeah. kills none of your actual real creatures. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, if you are in. Uh, white, you are probably the weakest to that sort of thing. Uh, in which case, you have to just go fast. Um, there are ways like you you play Wrath Effects if you're in a control list. If you are in blue, you have access to Ashiok Dream Render, who just says you can't search your library, so you literally just shut them off of the Scape Shift plan. Yeah. But obviously, you have to have backup. So, for example, the the the, the Bant Ramp list plays Asher off the sideboard as another option. There is another card from Ixalan, which is Rivals of Ixalan, which is a rare. It's a four mana spell, and it's got Flash. And when it enters the battlefield, any token that's created this turn is created yeah, under, under your, your control. Field. Yeah, the the blue one, uh, the Spectral. Uh, let me go and look at it on on here. But yeah, keep, sorry, you keep going. So that's one way. Um, the other way, you can just go underneath it. Like you can just play something like uh, Zombie. Uh, sorry, Vampires or not or Feather. Like. The feather list has a really good has a really good scape shift matchup because they make zombies and they're all one color and you just god's willing through you could and also they don't really interact with you particularly well um so you can set up board state like your 10th district legionnaire is really good against that deck so that's why we're doing it black white zombies or white white uh, white blue weenie is really good as well because they just go faster than scape shift you can get them dead before they can really do anything and a teferi time raveler isn't going to get in the way of it if you're playing a big mid-range list or you want to play a big mid-range list Play, don't play it unless it's got Field of the Dead at the moment, anyway, or it's or it's a mass manipulation ram list. Because if you're trying to play a grinded mid range list, you'll just get buried under, for example, the Yarok list or the Field of the Dead list, unless you can come up with those bits and pieces in the signed. So I would I would at the moment, unfortunately, say if you want to play mid range, you play a Field of the Dead list right now, and that's yeah. as it currently sits. Um, or you play something that is good against those decks. Take for example Feather. Feather has a good matchup against a lot of different decks. I lost to not drawing lands. Yeah, you <laughs> did. That, that, that was all it was. Yeah. So let's say that one to pinch of salt. Um, that was very close. The feather versus what was it playing against? Uh, uh, that was the blue, flash. Uh, flash. Yeah, yeah. That's another list you can play because that flash four drop fits into that deck quite nicely. Plus, also you play a pile of counter spells. Teferi can be a challenge, but you can beat that. You can beat Teferi. Uh, it, you can also play the new Saltai version, which has got Assassin's Trophy, which is another way of beating out Teferi. Uh, you you fly and do a lot of damage. So. There's a lot of ways that you can fight Scapeshift. You just have to be well aware that you are more likely to play against Scapeshift than not. Play. If you if you sat down against an opponent at a tournament, you're more likely to play against Scapeshift than any other deck in the room. If you sit down in an F and M, you'll probably play against something. I'm fairly sure that when I go to F and M tomorrow, I'm going to play against very few Scapeshift lists. But if they are, then I'm well prepared for the deck I'm taking. I'm taking a deck that beats Scapeshift because I would like to actually win some games of magic because i haven't played in a while in paper magic yeah so obviously to be fair this is the first time i played against someone face to face we'll do quote unquote face to face uh since i don't know a couple of months now i and... say what the last set of mcqs maybe basically oh, yeah and I, I definitely want to play decks that are good against uh again that so my obviously my starting point is my starting point decks are feather uh your um 
black white uh, black white vampires uh, or like Jun dinosaurs is also a reasonable matchup if you can go fast enough. If they stonewall you, you will lose the game. That's yeah, and that's the, the problem, problem is unless you're playing the uh, the moon effects, the um, or flame sweep. The, yeah, but the flame sweep doesn't help against the instant speed scape shifts. Like if they get the instant no, speed scape shift <laughs> off because they've got to fairy time rival on the battlefield. You don't get a chance to respond to that unless you can kill Teferi in between them, ticking it up and then casting the scape shift. And it's like that's such a narrow fracking thing to be doing. That I think, I think if I was playing John Dinosaurs, I'd be very interested in playing X, uh, some number of fries or noxious graphs in the sideboard. Uh, there's definitely there there are noxious. There's three noxious graphs in that version that I was playing earlier, and uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. And like you say, Fry is another good one. I can't, I can't pick between the two at the moment because obviously I do like killing me some green creatures because there's a lot of big green. Yeah, um, Cavalier of so... Thorns is still very good. Yep. Yeah, Hydroid, Crisis. Hydroid Crisis, it kills that no matter how big they make it and that kind of thing. I love me some black removal spells that just say destroy target whatever yeah. creature on them. And, and the life gain is relevant as well. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. The one point of life can often yeah. often swing things. Um, so yeah, there's. There's a lot of stuff to be thought about if you're trying to beat Bandscape Shift, but you do have to consider that you have to beat yeah. Bandscape Shift. Let's put it this way. You can beat the deck. The reason the professionals are playing it is because it's... Uh, the reason that the top level players slash professionals are playing it is because it is broken. Yeah. It is incredibly powerful, and if you are going to be playing against other people playing broken mid-range decks, then you play Scape Shift. Yep. Yeah. If you want to go to a tournament and you don't play Scape Shift, there are a large number of decks that you can play that are good against Scape. That are good against Scape Shift. Like yeah. we, I've played probably two decks today that could fight Scape Shift. You've yeah. played multiple decks today that can fight the Scape Shift list, and that's kind of what we did. Neither of us played the Scape Shift list. I don't own four Scape Shifts on Arena. I'm not going to buy four Scape Shifts with them rotating out. Yeah, exactly. I bought one Nexus for the Yarok deck. It's like one Mythic Wild card's fine. Yes, exactly. And that's the way you have to look at the format. You either play Scape Shift, or you need to have a plan to beat Scape Shift, or just yeah. a naturally good matchup like Feather, uh, or Vampires because they're just going faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Sanctum Seeker is a very good card against Scape Shift. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because yeah, if they're running uh, Root Snare, then you still do damage to them because it's life loss <laughs> from the trigger. <laughs> yeah, that's quite tasty. Um, yeah, obviously we do actually talk a lot about this on the podcast, which. Uh, Axion now do have ready to rock on the website. I'm not sure if it's uh, visible yet. Let me uh, let me do a quick check. While Jack's doing that, just to answer your question, Confit Diamond, I won't be at GP Birmingham. Neither will I. Uh, I won't be going. Um, I may try and get to some Mythic Championship qualifiers at some point in Standard. Um, I don't know yet. My, my time is very much taken up by my little one, which is why this fits in really nicely. Um, and my family had my Actually, the, the podcast is Look. very much live over on Axiom now if you guys want to go and check it out and when we get done here I'll have to go and do the uh, the social media pushes for that but uh, yeah like um, I'm I'm with you John um, I, I'm not going to uh, GP Birmingham Sim will Sim's going for for standard standard side events and the standard MCQ so um, he'll he'll be there conflict and uh, yeah I won't be going because yeah, I I would have enjoyed to uh, enjoyed it, but you know, life's a little bit at the moment yeah, with 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 the moolah, it's a little bit uh, tight yeah. at the moment trying to buy a, ha a house and all that. So yeah, it's expensive. Like you have to bear in mind, these events are expensive, and yeah. I would prefer to honestly prefer to spend my time with my family yeah. uh, that weekend. Um, I met, depending on how things go with Axion and what their plans are for the uh, Mythic Championship Qualifier weekend, I may be at that. Yeah, not probably not playing. Like my play time is probably now limited to Arena and playing on Thursdays with Jack, which is fine. It's more than enough time for me to play. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I'm hoping that Axion put together something that would allow me to go to uh, the Axion event. Um, which would be great. But again, yeah. it's one of those things that I I like doing this sort of thing where I get to interact with people on a different on a different level than just going to a tournament and playing. I want to do more things with my uh, with my time in Magic. I want to 
try and get towards doing coverage and stuff again like i used to do and there's obviously this is part of the way of doing that yeah absolutely uh crafty cut purse is the uh, is the flash 2-2 two, two that steals all of your opponent's tokens so they go scape shift you go crafty cut purse well no they go make all of triggers. these lands put the triggers on the stack and then you go crafty cut purse because you don't want them going okay i'm just going to get seven of the same land like not get the the number of lands required to trigger, and I'll try and find another escape shift and go round again. Uh, that is not what you want them doing. So, um, yeah, you you want them to give you the the tokens, which means what you have to do is be able to say, yeah, those triggers are on the stack. I'll have them now. And like you say, that goes really nicely in a uh, in a simic or even a soul tie flash list. Yep. So, yeah. If you're in black, just before we do go, the other card you can play in black is Legion's End. Um, it obviously exiles all. Of the zombies yep you cut you target one kills them all so the the other way you can do it is if you're in an esper deck or for example you have teferi in your list then legion's end becomes a very interesting card to play in your sideboard i would be playing at least one in the esper decks right now yes uh, it's also a really good way of dealing with um a danto vanguard mm. because you've taken out moment of craving that card can be quite hard for you to deal with so it's another way of dealing with the danto vanguard after sideboard plus if you hit if you are lucky and you hit one on play you can also take it out the hand as well if they happen to have another one yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Uh, right then, just so that the folks here know what's going on, uh, John and I are intending to do this as many Thursdays as possible. I will say right now that actually I need to talk to John about my schedule in the next few weeks. That says, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that says that I might not be able to do it for the next couple of weeks, which is super annoying. But we're intending on doing this, and obviously, if you watch the uh, listen to the podcast as well. What we're hoping to do is get your input on the decks that we should be playing, and that is either you submit deck lists, and we go and we if we can build them, we play them. Right, if one of us has the has the cards for it, we build them, and we and we play them, or we yep. we maybe start doing some polls, especially when we we start getting like MCQ data again, uh, which yeah. will inevitably come around next season. We'll get some more MCQ data, and then what we can do is we can start putting up some polls, and have you folks, you know vote on what it is you want to see us play and then hopefully that gives you an idea if you haven't like seen the decks in action you get to see them from us so that's that's the plan going forward as it is i'm trying to move myself back into streaming on a regular schedule so hopefully you'll see a little bit more of me uh going forward it probably won't be solidly until after gp birmingham when sahar comes back when i've got a little bit more time and hopefully when a bunch more stuff with buying a new house is like finished and being finalized so yeah and and also i think there's something this is obviously just to, to test how well it works obviously yeah. it's worked really well today i think that also once the uh throne of el drain comes out that's going to be the big time where we i will where we will probably pick up a huge amount of time oh, doing yeah. this because of the brewing inside of it the new decks you can build obviously it's going to be a brand new format new cards new decks we lose some of the obnoxious stuff that we have now unfortunately escape to shift to fairy five um uh unfortunately uh, to fairy, to fairy of fate. Time is still here. yeah it's a very time raveler still here but i i feel like to fairy time raveler while being reasonably powerful is still within the realms of a standard level magic card it's not sees instant play uh, in like modern and legacy i mm. I think, does, three, now, I think Teferi 3 is more powerful than Teferi 5 very mm. easily. I think that card is that card makes for some very, very uninteresting games, whereas Teferi 5 is a lot easier to deal with. And take that with a pinch of salt. If you're on the play with Teferi 3 and your opponent makes a 2-drop, you play Teferi 3 and bounce it. Yeah, you feel so ahead. You are you just are so ahead. ahead. Which is another reason for playing the Feather List, because you have a load of haste. Yeah. So Teferi is less effective against that sort of deck, and tapping out and plussing against Feather is nigh on likely enough for your guy, your Teferi, to die. Yeah, absolutely. Or get put to one and then just not do anything again. So I think it's um, one of the things is the new format will bring some interest. Interesting enough, it's 60, six zero weeks until Teferi Time Raveler uh, rotates. Days. No, no, Teferi Time Raveler. Time Raveler. Oh, 60 weeks. weeks. Yeah, so that's how much longer you have to ferry time raveler in standard. Just for those of you who are interested. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest me. with you. I might be a little bit bored of him by then. <laughs> so yeah, so the interesting thing is obviously if you take the decks from today, if we look at the decks we all played, uh, the the decks I played, um, feather becomes a 
is going to be interesting to see what happens when it rotates. Yeah. Uh, because it loses Reckless Rage. Like, that's the main card it loses. Um, all the other cards are, like, Dreadhold Arcanist, 10th District Legionnaire, Feather the Rule from the Fairly new Fairly new, yeah. Lose Shock, that's fine. I can deal with that. But there'll be a Reckless replacement. Rage, like, there'll be a, some level of replacement. Losing Reckless Rage will be the biggest thing. Yeah. Uh, because it's the, the best removal spell in the deck. Yep. Uh, if we take the Green-White Bow... Uh, it loses Lanoir Elves, which isn't the end of the world. Uh, you start, may play a bigger list. You also lose Jade Light Ranger. Uh, that's it's still playable. Yeah, yeah. Your the entire base. Wild Growth Walker package just goes away, and that that deck never gets to come back. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and the Yarok list, uh, the Yarok list still exists. Uh, you lose the Nexus of Fate Kill um, because oh of God. how it interacts. But if you look at the rest of the list, it is all from the most recent sets. You've got uh, Yarok's M20, Cavalier's M20. If you look at the M20 cards, you've got Yarok, Cavalier, Risen Reef. Uh, then you've got all the Ravnica set in a Boreal Grazer, Assassin's Trophy. Elvish Rejuvenator is the one that goes. It'll be interesting to see if there is a replacement for Elvish Rejuvenator. Mm. Uh, and then obviously the sideboard, most of it still exists. We've obviously, um, I believe we've got a Negate reprint at the moment, or maybe it comes in Throne of Eldraine. I can't see them getting rid of Negate. Negate's evergreen. Negate is an evergreen card. I can't see them yeah. ever having a standard format without it in. Same uh, as same as Duress. It's in M20. You know. It's in M20. Oh, Don't of course worry about it, it is. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, so it'll be interesting um, how you change the list. Um, yeah, I mean, for, for my... Never came up. For my lists, uh, the Simic Flash list loses some tech cards, but it doesn't lose anything, like, particularly important to it. Uh, yeah. the Jun Dinos list does lose quite a lot of stuff because obviously yeah, it gets gutted. A lot of it, a lot of the the original power, like Ripjaw Raptor and uh, Otapek Huntmaster and Commune with Dinosaurs, which really helps hold the whole deck together. And Gold Golta, which was obviously just a massive part of the the kill in a lot of the games that we play today. They just go because they're in Ixland. So that deck probably stops existing, which is a little bit annoying. And then the <laughs> Esper Tempo list loses some of its top end, but much it of it... Fairy. Yeah. Uh, so on much the, of it still the, exists. Yeah, it loses Hostage Taker, but that's, that's, a, that's, that's yeah. neither here nor there. One of the biggest things will be interesting to see is how the mana base has changed. I think yeah. if you are playing a medium to aggro list, you have to just be two colours yes. at the start because of risk of missing colors if you take feather for example it's probably going to be better as a black as a white red list straight white red yeah uh rather than trying to splash the color um the if you because we're losing the check lands it makes your mana base slightly worse like less consistent obviously throne of eldraine may pop some surprises i'm hoping they just reprint the other five temples so we have the 10 temples yeah that would be good that that's what i'm expecting but temples always come into play tapped and it does slow your deck down a significant amount. It's obviously one of the things we spoke about before in the podcast. But when we think back to the Theros format, the decks that were three color were grindy lists with things like Corsair of Crufix and Siege Rhino. Those decks didn't kill you quickly. Um, whereas if you're wanting to play a reasonably aggressive deck, you probably need to be in something with um, just two colors. Or if you have a reason to be in three colors, it needs to be a good one. Yeah. Because if you take, for example, the ramp lists, the ramp lists will probably just go back to being green blue. Yeah. as the starting point because they don't need to have a third color to try and cast a fairy time rather on three will be interesting on your mana i think it will be a very interesting format when we do get to it and how the mana bases evolve yeah um obviously if you're in a green mid-range list or a greenish mid green base deck by losing lanoir elves and only having a boreal grazer you're more incentivized to fight your tap lands because it doesn't matter you're you have you aren't losing out anything with it coming into play untapped on turn one yeah yeah um, uh, so it kind of helps and a Boreal Grazer is a fine two, fine turn 2 play it still ramps you to 3 mana yes there's there's that and it, it also opens up things like Paradise Druid just looking a lot better just going yeah. okay well I'm not I'm not going to be as stupidly fast as I could have been previously you know there's no turn 3 5 mana Planeswalker draws anymore but at the same time actually playing Paradise Druid just makes your deck so much more consistent in terms of it, it can play those three colours now. So you can, you could say, okay, if I'm going to ramp, I'm going to ramp with Paradise Druid and that's going to help me fix for my white mana or my black mana and slash either to Fairy or some removal spells, you know, if I'm if I'm doing the ramp thing. But that's, that's a whole... Yeah. And another, we might also see um, 
car decks come back that we haven't seen for a while. We might see things like the the band mid range list coming back using yeah. uh, using things obviously the the Vivian and having things like a Ketra. God Eternal Ketra hasn't seen play for a long time in the top two decks. That might come back. Um, you may start to see things that haven't seen play um, actually see play. So you might see God Eternal Kefnet, you might see Dungeon Geists, you may see Commence the End Game, depending on what the best blue, what the best fairy list is. You might see Liliana Dreadhorde General coming back. Like if you're going into a mid range list, you are now in, probably incentivized to play Liliana Dreadhorde. You'll yeah. probably still have a Field of Dead deck because that deck is still a thing. But there is going to be a cost in your mana. You will have to make adjustments to your mana base to take into account what you're playing. We might see Chandra see more play. We might see Sark and see more play. Cards that are really powerful but haven't seen play for a while may start to come back. Biogenic Ooze is another card. Uh, the new Vivian Artbow Ranger might see more play. I would like to. I think that Nissa will always see play because that card is incredibly powerful. It will probably be fairer to play now on turn four. <laughs> Yeah, than it is yeah. at the moment when you can cast that card on turn three. Your opponent has two lands, and they probably die. <laughs> if trust me, if you've ever played the game where you've gone turn one land or elf, turn two dork or whatever variety, turn three Nissa, you will nine times out of ten win those games because you just put so much pressure on the board so so quickly. It's incredible how fast that deck is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we'll have yeah. to wait and see. I hope that I hope that the the format gets shaken up a bit. I hope we see a lot of things come back that we haven't seen play for a while. I hope we see new things come up as well. Mm. Um, it's interesting. You might um, just going back to the feather list instead of playing um, uh, raging uh, breakfast rage. You may end up seeing a lot more um, intervention. Uh, uh, yeah. See play. Yeah. That might be another one as well. I I think there are going to be. We might heaven forbid you might see Nicol Bolas Dragon God see play. <laughs> and it'll be interesting um, if you're because of the way the decks might be. Golas, uh, Tyler's Pilgrim might be your best, might be the top end broken mid range list because it's suddenly going to have a reason to be played. Because if the format slows down, also Mono Red loses a lot of stuff as well. Your aggro decks are losing a lot of their power, innate power, because you have like you're, by losing the Dominaria block, you're losing things like History of the Nali, or you're losing. Um, uh, you're losing um, Bellinish Marshall. You're losing a lot of the very impactful cards that do see play. Mm. And it, it's really powerful. And if you're putting together the Yarrow list, it's really good fun. And it's also inc- insanely broken. When I was like, well, while I'm sitting here, uh, for Mythics, two Mythics, yeah. I'll get there. <laughs> yeah. I want to like... I, I wanna give it a go before before this team event uh, at Axion and, yeah. and just have a if, little play around with it. Can... I think if you can borrow it, you'll enjoy it more than John. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll have to. We've got a lot of different things. I hope there's a lot of cards that don't currently see play. See play. Like I hope Rolex sees play or uh, Rowlesk, as his actual name is, sees play. <laughs> great fun. Yeah. But we'll have to wait and see. I, I think a lot of the rotating stuff will help the mid range lists become more diverse again. And Field of the Dead will not be the go to broken land deck. Yep. No, we'll absolutely. have to wait and see. We'll I definitely to, think we'll I'm going to do some look. climbing with. Definitely think I'm going to do some climbing with Yarrick before the season ends. Mm, mm. We've got, we've got 22 days. Currently ranked at bronze tier one. Oh, nice. So yeah, we've got plenty of climbing to do. Yeah. Uh, basically, the last two seasons, I, because I've been more focused on family and work and less on uh, climbing the ranks. All I do each, all all I do each time I get to play is, uh, bang in, um, bang feather into it. And just complete my challenges. Your, your tasks for the day. Yeah, absolutely. Because I want to get to the 100 mastery. What mastery level are you at at the moment? Oh, seven. It's nothing. Oh, I, well. didn't, I didn't play last month. Sure. You know, yeah. I, I just didn't get a chance to play basically all of last month. Uh, so I'm at so. level 62. Oh, well, you've already earned your money back then. Yeah, so so the the, the, the thing is with, um, with it is that probably now... I need to start focusing on the ranks climb and focusing yeah. on best of threes there. And I think Yarok might just be the deck that I enjoy doing that on. Yeah, fair. Um, and we'll have to see. I think that standard right now is. No, this is gonna... I'm going to have to temper this one. I think standard is a in a good place. Yep. Um, because, yes, people will look at it and go, oh my God, scape shift still exists. Yeah, but we've only got two months of scape shift. We've got 60 days. That's two months before yeah. escapes your rotates you know what fine how many how many standard high level events are there going to be 
for people in the UK between now and then. Probably maybe one uh, or two. Yeah, two depending on how how high you count it. Basically, there's the yeah. MCQ at Birmingham, and then like maybe uh, a pure standard event at the at the Mega Modern or. Uh, or someone else runs another big standard event. There's no premier premier events no, apart from there's the no MCQs. There's, there's no, no yeah, there's no GPs, no, uh, there's no, no MCQs event. apart from that one in Birmingham that's an outlier because it's at a Magic Fest. And there's no yeah. there's there's no PPTQ or RPTQ scene to to hit up. So yeah, it's fine. Like even even if I I honestly think that even if standard was completely busted at the moment and Scapeshift was just legitimately the best deck and you know you're back to the days of when it was blue white flash versus uh golgari um delirium delirium yeah yeah like that. if you if you go back to that you're fine it's three months with like no major events um yeah is it annoying yeah sure but also it isn't even that bad it's scape shift and how often does scape shift see play in standard it's been in standard for two years no play yeah. now yeah. it's in you know what? Uh, so be it. Standard exactly. needs standard needs a best deck. Standard will always get a best deck. That is but just the way standard is. Standard needs a best deck that is beatable. Yeah. The problem and with some of the previous best decks in standard they, is that they, they have been so good that yeah. they are very hard to beat, and you have to build some very wacky decks to beat them. Team of Marvel springs just to mind. Team of Energy. Team of Energy was pretty much too good. Yes. Mono red with mono red with Hazaret. Uh, mono red with. Uh, Rampage, Rampage and Frost Frost. On. Yeah. Also, the other thing to note is after, in 60 days' time, we'll have no cards on a ban list anymore, which will be pleasant because we haven't yeah. had that for a good few years. We really we haven't. Cards. Uh, yeah, black, black, red, mid range was a totally fair deck. There was nothing warping about the black, red, mid range deck. I, mean, I, think yeah. Wizards, yeah. I think Wizards learned their mistake from those cards that were just broken. Yeah. That they realise that people don't want to play them, and it does make a very, very bad format. If you look at it right now, if you so I have pulled up the uh, MTG Goldfish, yeah, which is always a good place to go. So if you take a metagame sample, the top six decks all have multiple, uh, have, all have double figures of decks. You have seventeen percent of the metagame share for Bent Scape Shift, fifteen percent of the metagame share for Orzo Vampires. 10% for Jun Dinosaurs, 9% for Esper Tempo, and then 6% for Mono Red, Bant Ramp. That is healthy. The thing that I will say is, that is from like MTGO deck dumps, and those don't necessarily give us a good smattering, but they are also from things like indication. the SCG Classics and Opens. I think it's a good indication. I think the format's healthy. Like What I've played of it on Arena, it never feels like, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to be fighting now. It's, you know, it's not even as bad as it was three-ish months ago when every matchup you entered in on arena it was like 50 50 as to whether it was going to be uh nexus of fate or any other deck in the field like it yeah. really felt that bad it felt it was like oh yeah this is either going to be nexus of fate or one of 20 other decks yeah and, and that was just an awful place to be now it feels a lot more fairer i actually have only had to play against uh scape shift like twice over the course of the last 20-ish matches so i'm not even like too worried about it it's, it's fine. i think i think i played it four or five times but that's just because i've banged in games and to be fair i've been playing feather so it's kind of not been an issue no exactly you don't care. I haven't really warranted it i mean i've actually fair i've just reset the uh, thing and uh, it's now put all of vampires at the highest percent of the metagame share but it just shows you that it changes on a daily basis and the best deck is not the standout best deck it, the, the pros play it because it is a consistent deck that will always be always have game against everything yeah or should have game against and that means things. that they get to leverage their play skill the rest of us get yeah. to look at it and go oh well it's a good deck but to get the most out of it you need to be very good with it and the point is that i'm not going to be very good with it by the time it even rotates so there's no point in me playing it i'll play something else something that i enjoy a lot more and that i have a lot a lot more game with so yeah Right. Yeah, nice no, no, something to bear in mind. We have rambled for a little bit. It's gotten yes. relatively late. Uh, thank you all very much for, for joining us, folks. Yes. If you're joining us on the YouTube, do hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Tell us what you liked, what you didn't like. We'd really, we'd be really interested to uh, to hear what it is that you would want changed or you know 
this is this is our first run. We wanted to try it out, and uh, and obviously we, we appreciate any feedback. Yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with how it went, but I'm very much open to to any suggestions that folks might have. Right then, uh, and obviously if you've been watching the stream, thank you all very much for watching as well, uh, and uh, thanks to Habibi for the uh, for the host there. I I'm relatively convinced that that might have actually been an auto host. I was like, it's fine. she doesn't normally fine. stream this late, but whatever, it's fine. Um, yes, and obviously, if you haven't, please do hit the follow button. It really helps out a ton. Right then, folks, from me and John, that's, uh, that's been Standard Intelligent Versus. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Yes, thank you very much.